Ladies, gentlemen, there's a lot of new information to go through, so let's waste no time. My name is Scott. Welcome to the channel. Let's talk Rocket Lab. Starting with the pre-fire mission, I'm filming this video on Monday, so ideally by the time it posts on Wednesday, we've had a successful 48th electron mission, aka the first pre-fire mission, aka ready, aim, pre-fire. One new bit of information that's come out recently is that there seems to have been an increase in $3 million to the price for the overall missions. So what was previously listed as $15.9 million for the total contract value of two launches, aka $7.9 million each, now seems to have been raised to $18.9 million for the combined total value, or $9.4 million for each launch. This price increase appears to be for a supplemental agreement for work within scope. If you scroll a little bit further down, there is also a mention of modification and attachments. So my assumption on this is that Rocket Lab is just doing an extra bit of work in order to get these satellites ready to be prepped and ultimately launched. So it's worth considering if this additional $3 million is going to be in addition to what we saw for the Q2 guidance. Given the time frame and how this has changed kind of within the past month or so, if Rocket Lab was already kind of tracking for doing additional work for this, I'm assuming that this was already included within the Q2 guidance. But something worth considering is that we might see a, a little bit of a bump of $3 million to what was otherwise, you know, give or take $30 million for the four launches within the quarter or a bit higher for the five launches within the quarter if we do end up seeing that fifth launch come to fruition. Speaking of which, it seems like we have the alleged internal targets for the remainder of Q2 launches. So like was mentioned, ideally by the time this video is posted, we have the successful first pre-fire mission on May 22nd. This will be followed up two weeks later on June 5th by pre-fire and ice, aka pre-fire number two. Past that, we have the first of five Kines launches launching on June 16th and Capella number five launching on June 26th. So realistically, these dates are going to be moved around by a day or two, hopefully at most. But the main takeaway here isn't so much the dates, it's the launch cadence that we have going forward. In a previous video, I mentioned that launch cadence needs to increase if we're expected to see 20 launches per year, and it seems like Rocket Lab is doing just that. Let's jump ahead, let's look into this recent conference where Adam Spice spoke, being the Bank of America Industrials Conference. So for a more comprehensive discussion on everything that was mentioned during this conference, be sure to check out Rocket Lab Weekly, where I sat down with Vince and Dave G, and we went over virtually everything that was announced from the Neutron Cadence to the Archimedes Hotfire to the upcoming Rocket Lab Constellation. I'll be sure to post a link to the video in the description below. So for this video, let's get into the good stuff, the numbers. When Rocket Lab reports their quarterly earnings, their business segments are broken into launch services and space systems. What was unique about last week's conference is that for the first time, Space Systems was broken down into merchant components and satellite manufacturing. So for those unfamiliar, the merchant components is simply taking the satellite and buying it at piecemeal. So to make a, a comparison to a car, if you don't buy the whole car, you're buying the wheels, you're buying the bumper, you're buying the doors, etc. Similar idea with merchant components where you're buying the star trackers, the reaction wheels, torque rods, separation systems, software, etc. Now for the satellite manufacturing, that is, as it sounds, it entails the designing and manufacturing of satellites. So everything being in-house. So when a company comes to Rocket Lab and they say, hey, we want a uh, Earth observation satellite, draft it up, build it, and yeet it into space, right? That's kind of what the, um, the satellite manufacturing side of the business entails. So it was unique to see that they finally didn't just give this overarching, um, like, like, hey, this is space distance because there's so much that's going on in between. Everything, like I said, from um, buying it piecemeal to the data, the software, to buying an entire satellite. I'm hoping that over time, Rocket Lab breaks this out because it's going to get really clumsy or not as straightforward as it could be when they start reporting this high margin data from their constellation and just calling it space systems, right? Because there's a vast difference between building a single component and running software from space. So ideally, ho hopefully, over time, launch is broken down into electron and neutron, and the space systems is broken down into, uh, you know, the components, the actual uh, designing and manufacturing, and the data applications. But that's wishful thinking, and uh, kind of maybe getting a little ahead of ourselves for now, let's get back to what was mentioned. 
So the commentary that was made surrounding the sub-segments being the merchant components and the satellite manufacturing is that merchant components is a $140 million run rate business with a 20%-ish CAGR. Also mentioned is of their March 31st backlog of $1 billion, that roughly $200 million of this is for launch, and the remaining $800 million backlog is for space systems. And as mentioned a moment ago, this was broken down further into $650 million being for satellite manufacturing and $150 million for satellite subsystems. Now here's what we can do with these numbers. We have Q1 reported, Q2 guided for, and an outline of what to expect for backlog recognition for the next 12 months. Of this, we know to expect roughly 20 launches this year, and we can assume another six in Q1 of 2025. At $8.1 million per launch, this arrives us at a launch revenue for the forward 12 months of $174.6 million. Subtracting launch services revenue from total revenue tells us what to look for regarding space systems revenue for the forward 12 months. So of this $252 million, we know to expect merchant components to be that $140 million run rate or 56% of space systems revenue. This leaves us with $112 million for satellite manufacturing. Let's move into the backlog. Starting with merchant components, unfortunately we don't have a lot of visibility here. We know that the components backlog is $150 million total, and that in Q1 there was $60 million added, of which was the initial $30 million from the solar supply agreement that was announced during the Q1 results. So as for the other $30 million, we know that there was a follow-up booking for Reaction Wheels supporting a mega constellation. Now as far as who this mega constellation is for, and the magnitude of the order, your guess is as good as mine. For satellite manufacturing backlog, we have $650 million total. This can be broken up into two timeframes that we'll simply call 2024 and 2025 plus. For 2025 plus, we have SDA worth 515 million and Victus Hayes being roughly 15 to $20 million for the Pioneer craft. Now keep in mind, this is $32 million for the full mission. So designing, manufacturing and launch of the spacecraft we're going to simply assume two thirds of that being towards the spacecraft and then leaving the additional 10 to $12 million for the launch. So that's how we're arriving at Victus Hayes being worth, we'll call it $20 million. So a small amount of the SDA and Victus Hayes contracts will be recognized in 2024, along with another 21 satellites expected to be delivered in 2024. So what we're going to do is we're going to round the 2025 plus timeframe down to $525 million to compensate for these initial payments. This $10 million adjustment will be reflected in the 2024 timeframe. Now to find this 2024 timeframe, we subtract the 2025 plus from the $650 million backlog total, leaving us with $125 million for 2024, which accounts for that $10 million adjustment. So from here, let's zoom into the MDA contract. The MDA contract has a total of contract value of $143 million. This contract was announced in February of 2022. We know that MDA is a Canadian company, and we know that in 2022 and 2023 combined, Rocket Lab received a total of $40.7 million for Canada as a whole. More specifically, we know that for 2023, $31.8 million was recognized by MDA in particular and while we don't know how much of Canada's 2022 recognition is MDA specific, we do know that the maximum value is this 4.5 million. So the minimum remaining value for the MDA contract as of 2023 end is $106.6 million that will be recognized in 2024. So finally, we know that in Q1, there is an additional $23.2 million of the contract recognized, leaving us with $83.4 million to be recognized throughout the remainder of 2024. Subtracting the remaining 83.4 million of the MDA contract from 2024 backlog of 125 million, this leaves us with 41.6 million remaining recognition for the two escapade satellites, one to two Varda satellites, and LOXSAT. Now this seems a little low. The Varda satellites are understood to be in the range of three to five million dollars per satellite, and the overall escapade mission, including launch, is 80 million. So even if there is only one Varda being delivered at the low end of $3 million, this only leaves room for $38.6 million for LOXSAT as well as both Mars-bound satellites. 
Granted, it's probable that some of the revenue was recognized previously, as we just saw with the MDA contract. Either way, I want to hear what you guys think about this $40 million. Does this sound too low? I've mentioned previously that based on backlog recognition, we can expect relatively flat growth for revenue throughout 2024. But as I'm looking through these numbers, it seems like maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And also, be sure to check out the Patreon to view and download the valuation models that I referenced to make these videos here for you, including price targets that go all the way out to 2030. Important to mention as well is that the price for the Patreon is set to increase on July 1st, and to put it plainly, it is with the intent of making this channel a more full-time project. So whether you're interested in the models themselves or just want to support the channel, consider the Patreon as it is the price of a cup of coffee. Thank you guys for the hangout. Hope you got value from the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Have an awesome day.